Welcome to practice. This class is all about the way in which we can organize ourselves on a spit from the perineum through the crown of the head to really be able to access a new vision, to have really good side mirrors, being able to see east and west, left to right, and to be able to get on our axis and really get around ourselves. In life, so much of what we're doing is figuring out how to get around ourselves, how to get over ourselves, how to get through ourselves or through situations, and we can really mimic this in the archetype of the body. To be able to have a really good spinal twist, to spin around yourself, to get a good vision all the way behind you, that good 360 degrees, you really have to be organized and plugged in from the ground of being up. And what I mean by that is you're really your perineum and the pelvic floor. If you think about the pelvic floor and the two buttock bones, it makes this triangle. We're always playing with trinities in nature and in the body and in great nature as a whole. And this is one of the trinities that forms the ground of being in our bodies. So when you have a plug in a socket, if you think of, uh, at least in the US, an electrical outlet that holds three prongs, when you really have yourself situated upright on top of the perineum, it's out of that that you can find the lift and the rise to get around yourself. Uh, if you think about when you're making kebabs or going to spin something, it has to be put on a spit in order to spin. And it's the same thing in our bodies. Often we try to spinal rotate and we're really collapsed back onto our seat and there's not enough lift to be able to actually get very far around ourselves. And that's when twists feel really, really crunchy. And a twist should be giving us more access to ourselves, not taking away. Um, and so we're going to play with how it is that we can use the fold and unfold from the hip and that organization and structure in order to find our good vision. Anytime we want to step up into our ability and then our ground of seeing, it requires that we have a solid foundation. So without any further ado, we're going to jump right in. I want you to take, uh, you'll need at least two blocks and uh, one to two blankets for this practice. So if you need to grab those, you can pause the video and get your props. And then when you come back, put your seat on the blankets and right away take two fists and measure between the arches of the feet, again, because that's our inner hip distance apart. And right now, I don't want you to worry about getting on your perineum. I actually want you just to extend your legs in a sort of lazy way and be wherever you are in your seat without overthinking it and just feel into the spine now like you can see if you look the way that I'm sitting now I'm still quite upright and it's not terrible you know posture but I'm not on my perineum and so there's definitely a little bit of a flattening of the lumbar curve the curve in the lower back and I want you to feel that same kind of thing in your body. So sitting pretty casual with your legs straight, you can see I'm not really activating my legs, let your legs just sort of hang. And now I want you to spinally rotate without thinking too hard, without changing anything in the lower body, lift up and off of your kidney band and spin around to the left. So take your right hand to the outside of your left knee and your left hand back behind you and really observe how far around yourself you can see. Just feel what kind of depth of twist you can get when the body is organized in this way. Note what you can see around the space that you're in. And then turn around to the other side. So nice and casual left hand to the outside of your right knee. Look back over your right shoulder and just see what you can see. Notice how far around yourself you can get. And then take a nice in-breath and come back to the center. So now we're going to make this seat more formal and find the implicit back bend that's in every shape. So in pretty much every yoga pose, there's an implicit unseen back bend. And it's the sense of moving against, you know, if we're in forward flexion, that's the rounding of the spine forward, we're still finding a sense of lifting and lengthening the front body from the pubis to the navel to the sternum so that there's this real sense of rise. So now I want you to get your perineum on the blanket so that we can really set up the upper body in such a way that it can be buoyant. And this is so important. Life is buoyant. Life carries us and we have to believe in the buoyancy of life and its ability to support us and hold us. It's not static. It's a foundation that moves, right? 
and we have to be the person who holds our center. And again, we play with all these archetypes in the body. So now that you're right up on top of your perineum, you can play the fold and the unfold in the hip a little bit better, and you can get a bigger rise to be able to spin around. So here now, rather than just bending your knees, which you can see as I just bent my knees, it didn't change anything in my pelvis or my back. Feet are still hip distance apart. I want you to isometrically drag your heels back. An isometric contraction means I'm not actually going to be moving the heels towards me, but there's here a sense that I'm pulling the floor towards me to bend the knee. And if you watch my pelvis and then do it in your own body, as I bend my knees, it's pulling my pubic bone forward. So now I have this really nice little tilt in my lower back. And now as I lift my upper body up, you can see that I've got this good wave in my lumbar spine in my lower back. And it might feel like you're pitched pretty far forward if you're not used to actually being up on your perineum in this way. So now we're gonna play the spinal rotation from here. So out of that plug in a socket, inhale and lift up through the crown of your head. And now go forward and around yourself, bringing your right hand to the outside of your left knee and your left hand back behind you and spin your neck so that you can look all the way back over your left shoulder and see how much farther you can see. So now that it's organized, you know, my right eye can really see the entire back of the room behind me. Again, because I've put myself on this spit from the ground of being the perineum below all the way up through the crown of my head connecting to the universal above me. And this is really, you know, the metaphor here, in addition to all this anatomical structure, is really the sense of knowing where you are and holding yourself in the middle of yourself, a piece of you connected to the ground below and a piece of you oriented to your North Star. Take another big breath here. And then turn and go all the way to the other side. So now the left hand will come to the outside of your right knee. Look back over your right shoulder and really lengthen from the perineum up through the crown of the head. Take a couple big breaths here, continuing to gently pull the pelvis forward and organizing yourself in this way. Left eye will be able to look all the way behind you now. Good, use your in-breath and come back to the center and then just shake your legs out. Very good, so we'll see as we move forward in the practice the way in which we can apply this to a spinal rotation in a downward facing dog, it's the same shape. So come up and off of the blankets and set them aside but nearby so that you'll have access to them later in the practice. And then bring your hands underneath of your shoulders and your knees directly underneath of your hips. Very good, so a nice and short downward facing dog. And then here, um, take a block and place it the long way between your thighs and find a good squeeze of the inner thighs on the block. And then curl your toes under in a really short downward facing dog and lift the sitting bones up and back. And for a moment, push your heels towards or to the mat and you'll feel how it's very rounded in the lower back and it's very, very short, but there's a nice stretch through the muscles of the calves all the way down the backs of the heels. Very good, now bend your knees a little bit uh, or a lot so that your belly comes to your thighs. And again, we're in a very short downward facing dog here and you're pressing from the balls of the feet up through the buttock bones. Now if think about what we just did seated and lengthened from the perineum all the way through the crown of the head so that the pelvic floor, navel center, whole front of the spine is finding that subtle implicit back bend. Now find a sense of grounding into the ball of the right foot and the palm of your left hand and then thread your right hand across your shins and catch your heel best you can. And now your right knee is going to be in your right armpit or moving towards your right armpit and your chin can tuck in your left armpit and find this little sense of spin underneath of yourself. Good, come back to the center and go to the other side. So now find a cross reference, that's a diagonal line from your right palm to the left ball of your foot in this very short downward facing dog still active on the block, spreading your toes, thread your left hand across your shins and catch your right heel. 
And again, here now, you can tuck your chin all the way into your armpit, and your left armpit is gonna be meeting the left knee as you throw the ball of your left knee into your left armpit. And look under the right armpit. Very good, come right back to the center and lower back down to all fours once again. Remove that block from in between your thighs. And now walk the hands a little bit forward so it's gonna be not such a short downward facing dog. I'm gonna crawl back on my mat a little bit. I'm a little far forward. But you start with your knees directly under your hips, your hands directly under your shoulders, and then walk the hands just a little bit forward so that we can find a slightly wider downward facing dog, but now it's gonna be that good 60 degree triangle that will pull us forward into a plank pose eventually. So right away, widen your seat and find a little poke of your tailbone back, broaden your collarbones, wrap your elbow points back and the eye of the elbow gently forward and lift off the center of the palm. Curl your toes under, and now lift your buttock bones up and back into more of a 60 degree triangle. So that shorter down dog that we just did was almost more like a forward fold in some ways than a down dog, where now we're in this good 60 degree triangle of strength and structure and stability. And you'll feel in this shape that most of the weight is back towards the feet and less in your hands poke your tailbone, your pelvic floor up and back, keeping the bend in the knee so that you can really open up the center of the hamstring. Take your ears right between your biceps and think that the priority is maintaining a wave in the spine. From here, shift forward now into a plank pose. And this is how we proof if our down dog was at 60. Because if our down dog was at 60 degrees, when we shift forward to plank and the balls of the foot is pressing down, the heels are up, then you're gonna find yourself right at 90 now with the shoulders directly over your wrists. Very good. Take another big breath here. And then press back to that downward facing dog once again. Good, we're gonna play our stability a little bit. So cross reference again, the left palm now and the ball of the right foot. So it's like there's a diagonal line from the left hand to the ball of the right foot. And now pick up your right hand without shifting much in the body, back of your right hand to your sacrum and keep organizing it. So you're in a three-legged dog, right? You just have a hand up instead of a foot. So take a nice big breath and then reposition the right hand on the floor. Again, find that cross-reference, palm of the right hand to the ball of your left foot. Draw a diagonal line and then really stabilize those two points and take the back of your left hand to your sacrum. Again, try not to shift, but keep yourself really organized on that central line on the spit. Place your left hand back on the floor, shift forward, lower down to your knees, and press back into a child's pose for a moment, and allow yourself to just feel the body. Maybe massage your forehead back and forth on the mat for a moment, really releasing that fascia and tissue around the cranium. Very good. And press up to all fours. Nice, so here I want you to play with the integrity of that pickup of the hand and not finding so much shifting across the pelvis. So take uh, two blocks and measure. How do you know you're at 90 degrees? Place a block flush to your thigh and one block flush to your forearm, and then you know you're right at 90. So all over in the body, joints form 90 degrees, and the lines are always a reference point, right? Nothing is linear in nature. Nature is all made of curving lines and spheres, and we use lines as a reference point to in time make things spherical. So organize it very well, 90 degrees, and then you can set those blocks back aside. And now image that you still have the structure of the piece that's going to be missing. So the cross-reference again. From your right palm, 
lift off the center of the palm, gently claw the floor without too much tension, and draw that diagonal line to your left knee so that you'll be able to reference the piece that's missing. And then spread the tops of the feet and take your left hand to your sacrum. Broaden your collarbones. Very good. And take your left hand back to the floor. Cross-reference now from the palm of the left hand to the right knee. And same thing, pick up the right hand and bring it to your lower back. So that the integrity is from the middle, not coming from the external structure, but again, it's really come from, from the center of you. And then take your right hand back down. Very good, we're gonna find that twisted down dog now without the block and with this new concept of this really powerful cross-reference to hold ourselves at the middle. A line is straight, the middle is moving. If you always toe the line and go in a straight line, eventually you're gonna run into a cement wall. So we're learning to hold the middle of ourselves so that we can go in any direction and have a lot more malleability and agility in our vision, in our lives, and in how we move our bodies. So in this shorter position, now curl your toes under and refold it at the hip crease. So again, that fold in your hip crease, the buttock bones lifting high and finding the low belly making contact with the thighs is what's gonna give you the spine on a spit so that you can really spin and have access to your vision from out of this ground of being. So draw a diagonal line now from the ball of your right foot to your left hand and then thread your right hand across and reach for your left heel. Plug your right knee into your armpit and optionally straighten your left leg and really spin under yourself, bringing your chin into your left armpit. Finding that vision now of the whole of the ceiling out of the spit. Good, unravel it, right hand down. Organize for a moment in the center, find the structure. Cross-reference, right palm of the hand to the ball of the left foot, and now thread your left hand under and catch your right heel. Tuck your chin into your armpit, drive your left knee into your left armpit, and gaze underneath of the right armpit, finding all of these points of contact which give you another piece of yourself. And then come back to the center again, find the down dog, and lower down to your knees. Very good, grab your two blankets once again. Let's play with this in a seated position once again so that we can find this in the seated way and again really connect to this fold in the hip and the way it, in which it facilitates the spin. So have a seat and organize the perineum onto the blanket once again so that there's a real sense of having that plug in the socket, connection to the ground below you. And now shift forward, a little bend in the knees. If you fold it all the way down, your knees would really land right in the armpits. Again, because we're meant to fit ourselves. And when we're in this position, you've got the knee in the armpit, the feet hip distance apart, and the palms of the hands will meet the heels. So come down actually there first for a moment, lengthening from the perineum down to the heels. And now wiggle your buttock bones back just a little bit so you're even more on the perineum and then recommit to that lengthening in the front of the spine so that there's a real sense of length here. Very good. Now take your right hand, thread it across and grab a hold of your left heel, your right knee is moving into or very close to the right armpit and then find the implicit back bend. Now out of the spit, start to rotate. Bring your hand to your sacrum and start to spin around yourself and maybe take the left arm up behind you. This is the same shape essentially that ju we just made in our downward facing dog. Let your right eye come all the way up to the sky. Again, continue to fight for that back bend spinning around yourself from the perineum to the crown of the head. Very good, take your left arm alongside of your ear now, look at it, swim it over the top of the right arm and catch your right heel with your left hand. So now you're crisscrossed over your legs. Unhook the right hand, left knee to left armpit 
And again, you can start with the hand on the sacrum, get a handle on yourself and spin open to the right and then take the right arm up to the sky so that there's this real sense of connection between the left side of the waist and the left thigh, and then the spinning open so that that right lung and right kidney can really open up and flush. Very good. Take your right arm alongside of your ear, fold it down, grab the left heel. Nice. Uncross the arms, grab the heels again, and then again recommit to that sense of length in the front of the spine and the opening of the backs of the kidneys. Very good. One more big full breath. And then lengthen the front of the spine. Take your arms alongside of your ears and sit all the way up back at 90 degrees. So you have this nice curve in the lower back and release your hands. Nice. Okay, come forward once again and get that uh, blanket out of the way. And just set it aside. We'll use it at the very end of class. Come back to all fours once again. Curl your toes under and right back to that 60 degree triangle again. And feel that downward facing dog and the wave in the spine. Good. Look forward and lunge your right foot between your hands and get your knee right in your armpit. So when your knee is in your armpit, it's the exact same thing we just did seated. It's the real organization of the body. So when the knee's in the armpit, there's no need to squish. And then instead of collapsing and going so deep in the lunge, which is often praised in yoga, but this is just a collapsing. It's too watery. It's too in the depths. It's not stable. We want a lower ground of being that supports vision and ability. So lift up so that the buttock bones come in line with the shoulders, lift your back heel, and then take your fingertips out to 10 and 2, and again, find that sense of lengthening from pubic to navel to sternum so the vision can come forward. That's it. Take a nice big deep breath. Good. And now we're going to unfold from the hip crease. So start to peel your chest off of the thigh, keeping that back heel lifted. Draw the pubic bone forward. Take your arms up into a warrior. Take the frame of opposite palm to opposite elbow. So you're really catching the ball of the elbow in the mitt of the palm of the hand and really supporting it. Take a nice big breath here. And then unfold it again. Bring your fingertips back to the floor and step back to the downward facing dog. Balls of the feet nice and spread. Lift your buttock bones. Send the center of the hamstring back by virtue of the bend in the knee. And lunge your left foot. Same thing. Take your time organizing the position well. So the left knee is being caught by the mitt of the armpit. Lift the back heel so that your buttock bones are nice and buoyant in line with your scapula, your shoulder blades, take your fingertips out to 10 and 2. Very good. Nice big breath. Lifting that back heel so it's nice and high and buoyant so that you don't have a basement of your house that's full of water. Very good. And then unfold it from the hip crease. And take the opposite frame, opposite palm to elbow. Drive your pubic bone forward and the crease of the left hip back, and then there's no compression in the lower back. Big breath, and then hands back down to the mat, step back to downward facing dog. Lower down to all fours, and grab two blocks and place them right across the center of the mat, okay? Two blocks right across the center of your mat. And we're going to place our pelvis on the blocks because another place that we play with the full to unfold is the downward facing dog to the up dog. And in a moment, I'll show you how this really corresponds to the fold and the unfold of the hip when we uh, do it from chair pose and standing. So bring the pubic bone and the pelvis or even just the top of the thighs. I'm going to scoot these back a little bit. The very top of the thighs onto your blocks. So most of us go way too low. And then find a floating up dog, so, or a katona style up dog. So the toes are curled under, 
inner thighs are spiraling up. Wrap your armpits towards your heart, just like we do in downward facing dog, so the collarbones can get nice and wide. Spin the inner thighs towards the sky and press your heels back, so it's really a leg game. And then press up and back to down dog, bend your knees, so you're in the fold of the hip. So all that's going to change is you're going to unfold from the hip, come forward, tap the thighs on the blocks, broaden the collarbones, and then back again, refolding at the hip. So the spine is really following the pelvis. The pelvis is leading. So go forward and back now and really flush it out. In many ways, it's like a giant cat-cow. can even let the gaze come up to the sky as you go forward and back. Just a couple more. So good. Beautiful. And back to that downward facing dog. Very nice. Lower down to all fours once again. Set the blocks aside. Come back forward onto all fours and back to downward facing dog. Find the little bend in the knees. And now walk your feet forward to your hands. Very good. Measure two fists between the arches. And take a deep breath in. Come all the way up to stand. Lower your arms to your side. Good. We're going to fold and unfold with the frame from the hip. So you can feel how it's really the same action that's happening in the down dog to the up dog. And the same connection that we have from the fold and unfold of the hip in order to find a rotation. So take your arms up and catch opposite palm to opposite elbow right alongside of your ears. Draw your pubic bone slightly towards your navel center. And then lift your upper back, send your buttock bones back, find the fold in the hip in a chair pose. And then keep sinking, keep sending your buttock bones back and your elbows forward till your torso comes parallel to the floor. And then full contact belly to thighs, lift your buttock bones. So you come into a hang. Rebend your knees, lift your torso parallel to the floor. Keep pushing till you end up in your chair pose, and then drive your pubic bone forward. Keep going, pubic bone forward, till you're in the back bend, which is essentially an up dog. Pubis forward. Good, refold it, buttock bones back, belly to thighs. A little smoother now, lift your seat as belly comes to thighs and then unravel it, lift the torso, sit back into chair, and push all the way up, taking the pubis forward. Again, sink the hips, find the crease in the hip, and then keep folding till your torso comes parallel to the floor, and then lift your buttock bones, fold over the legs. Rebend your knees, start to back bend to pull you into chair, and then drive your pubis forward, unfolding it. Pause at the top this time and take your arms down to the side. Very nice job. Bend your knees and come down into a hang once again. Take your hands underneath of your heels. Get your knees in your armpits and lift your buttock bones. And find the implicit back bend, that real sense of lengthening from the pubic bone to the navel to the sternum. One more big full breath. Take your hands out from under your heels. Walk your hand, feet back to downward facing dog. Take a moment there, put yourself on a spin again, 60 degrees, and then lower down to all fours. Very good. Grab your blankets, one or two back behind you. And then come back to all fours again. Stretch your right leg back behind you. And then cross your right leg behind your left. So the right knee is plugging into the back of the left knee. And those blankets are just back there and ready for you. And now spin your pelvis around to the right. Really get in the hip joint and feel how the ground of being, the pelvis moves, which causes the ground of doing an ability to move the shoulders and maybe even the head. 
change directions and see how that feels. It'll feel a little wonky to go to the left and then go back to the way that feels a little juicier. Really spread the tops of the feet on the mat. Good. Pause in the center and walk yourself back now so that you're in a gomukhasana with the knees stacked and your buttock bones elevated on the blanket. And some of us might be able to walk the feet out a little more parallel to the front edge of the mat, or they might be a little farther back. Grab a hold of your ankles and again spin the pelvis around to the right. It's going to be a smaller movement, just stirring your waters. Again, we're really playing in the ground of being because this fold and unfold, this lower body, and our ability to organize that first fold well sets up the foundation for every other pose. It's the foundation for your life. The stock has to be healthy and well tended to. Your stability and your mobility, your virility, and your ability to hold ground to support the rest of you. Good, pause in the center. Kick your sitting bones back and walk your fingertips forward just as far as you're able. In time, we're really meant to fit ourselves. You might be able to get your chin right over your knee. Couple big breaths here. One more full breath. Walk the hands back in. Shift forward back onto hands and knees. Uncross the right leg, stretch it back, and then lower the right knee down. Place the knees back underneath of your hips and we'll move to the other side. So take your left leg back, spin your right shin across your mat, and then cross left knee behind your right. And you might need to wiggle those knees over into the center line or walk the hands over a little bit so you're nice and organized. And now spin around to the left. So going counterclockwise, it's the spin of the planet. When we were going around to the right, it was the spin of time. Really open it up. Good contact, best you can, between the left kneecap and the back of the right knee. Spread the tops of your feet so you have a good anchor to stabilize you as you stir your pot. And then pause in the center and walk your hands back and find, again, Gomukhasana. Take a moment to organize it. Again, finding the perineum and the two buttock bones on the blanket. Bring your hands to your ankles so your ability, your capacity in second floor of your house is holding on to your stability. So you're using your ability to help with your stability. And then spin around to the left. Again, the motion's not going to be huge here, but there's a real sense of stirring your pot, of sloshing the water around, which is our kidneys and our adrenal system. So we're learning to self-soothe. And again, really setting up a good foundation so we don't have to use the back so much. We tend to really use the back for everything. And what I'm hoping you'll start to understand is that out of the stability of the legs and the fold and the unfold from the hip crease, that's how you're going to find a big vision and a big ability to twist around yourself. Very good. From here, uncross your legs. Not very, oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot to take you forward. Recross your legs if you already undid it. And start to kick your buttock bones back and walk your torso forward. I got so excited about the next piece of class. <laughs> and again, maybe your chin can even hook over the knee. And take a few soothing breaths here. And now walk your torso back up. Again, sorry about that. And uncross the legs, nice and unglamorous. Come forward again, extend the legs, and find the buttock bones again. Nice and wide. Very good. I'm going to turn and face you. Really organize yourself once again, though, so that you're right up on top of the perineum. And then here, pull your right heel in towards 
I'm gonna scooch a little bit down. Pull your right heel in towards your groin and your left leg is out at just a very casual V shape. So not a big wide straddle, but just a little sense of a V. And then take a block and place it on its lowest height underneath of your left knee. Turn your torso over your extended left leg so there's a little sense of tension and opening on the right side of the back. And then crawl your hands forward and pause. Recommit to the length of the front of the spine. Pubis to navel to sternum. And keep folding down. Some of you might feel that you can take your right hand across now and catch the pinky edge of your left foot. The right side body is going to want to cock open. I want you to recommit to taking the right side body down and then fold it. So you're really in the shell of the back. If you have the space, you can take your left hand, thread it under your right arm, and grab a hold of your right knee with your left hand. And then again, recommit to the right side of the body, lowering towards the floor, really into the shell of the back. A couple more big, full breaths. Good. Very gently, if you took all those vines, release them and slowly, slowly crawl yourself back up and switch sides. Extend the right leg out to that little V. Pull the left heel in towards the groin. Prop the block up underneath of the right knee so that you can really facilitate the opening in the lower back over the opening of the hamstring. Turn your torso over your extended leg. Kick your buttock bones back and start to fold forward. Again, the priority is finding that crease in the hip so that the spine can lengthen. If I take the crease out, then the back becomes very, very round. And this is a fundamental principle in yoga asana of how we create the spaciousness, which is really what we're after. We want a heart that pumps well, and we want kidneys that flush, right? We're not um, the goal isn't touch your toes. The facility to touch the toes is going to come from this really good contact and a good fold. Optionally, take your left hand to the pinky edge of your right foot, folding down, and some of you might be able to slide your right hand under your left to catch the left knee, and then again, recommit to moving into the shell of the back, the left side body coming down towards the floor, and be soothed by your own breath. Very good. Two more big full breaths. Very gently unravel and then walk the torso back up again, leading from the pubis and the front of the spine. Take the block out of the way and extend your legs so that you're in a very small little baby straddle. So your heels are just a bit wider than your, um, your mat. I'm going to turn back to the side for this one so you can see. So heels about as wide as the mat, right on the perineum, and bend the knees. A nice generous bend. And now fold forward like you are taking a, a seated happy baby and pull forward, wiggle the buttock bones back a little bit, keep full contact, belly to thighs, knees to armpits. Now take your right hand and reach across and grab your left ankle. So my right knee is right in my right armpit. You might have to shorten the stance a little, and I'm receiving the shin in the mitt of my left hand. Take your left arm and spiral it open, and again, be on a spit so you can really turn around yourself. Look at your left hand, watch it with your gaze, swim it forward and cross it over the right, palm of the left hand to right shin. Now your left knee is in your left armpit, unthread the right arm, put yourself on a spit and spin around to the right. Look at your right hand, swim it up and over, grab the left ankle. Keep going now and keep thinking that you are creating space and length from the perineum through the crown of the head. 
weaving a braid with your breath, with your body, playing the ground of stability, the ground of your ability, the ground of your vision, playing with the back body, which is your reflection, and the front body, which is your potential. Really holding yourself at the center. One more set. Good breathing. Nice. The next time both arms are down, uncross the arms, hold the heels once again. Lengthen the front of the spine like a little happy baby, seated. And then lengthen the front of your spine. Stretch your arms forward. Sit all the way up. Release your arms and sit in Sukhasana, as it is often known. Your heels in line with one another. And get your perineum right up on top of the blanket. Lean forward, perineum to the blanket. Walk the spine back up. Throw your arms up in the air into the shape of a V, an equilateral triangle of strength, structure, and stability. Make cups in your palms. We're going to pump out a couple of bati breath. So a couple of bati breathing is a forceful exhale out the nose where you snap the abdomen back, sort of like you were trying to blow out a birthday candle with your nose. So it sounds like this. <laughs> and every time you release the abdomen, the body will naturally fill with an in-breath again. So we're going to pump out a breath for about 30 seconds. So take the arms up, take a nice deep breath in, and when you're ready, start pumping away. <laughs> Take a deep breath in, hook your thumbs. Fill it all the way up. Three more little sips. One more little sniff. Hold your breath and squeeze yourself up from the bottom to the top like a tube of toothpaste and pop your cork and exhale. Bring your hands down to your knees. Feel again that anchoring of the perineum and the two sitting bones, that plug in a socket. And now take your pubic bone forward as you breathe in. And exhale, arch your back, take the pubic bone back. Go forward and back now with your hands on your knees so your ability and your stability are connected. So the real sense that you've sort of gone down into the basement to roll your sleeves up, go forward and back. Good, so now as you go forward and back, start to pick up the pace and act like you are striking a match. So the pelvic floor is a match and the earth is a giant striker. So go forward and back and start to pump your breath like a bull snorting. We call this a bastrika's breath or a bellows breath. It's a forceful inhale and a forceful exhale. So move forward and back now. You can keep your chin parallel to the floor and really play with the pubis to the tailbone. So there's a real sense of the entirety of the terrain that you're playing with when you're down in the lower body and when you're orienting in this fold and unfold that gives you this rise to have this big vision that makes your third eye available to you and your big imagination. So keep pumping your breath and go forward and back. <laughs> Pause in the center, take a deep breath in. Exhale, fall into a spin to the right. So go nice and slow now. An image that you are stirring the waters of the body now. Spin around to the right. Nice slow breaths, inhaling forward, exhaling back. Good. Three more in this direction playing with the fluency that is in the ground of being because everything is a fractal of everything else. So every piece of your body has a heat element and a water element and an earth element. Good, pause and change directions. Spin around to the left now. You wanna know again how to hold the middle and really move in a lot of directions. 
We want to be able to go anywhere in life, to be the center of an eight-spoke wheel. And one of the ways that we start to get the technique and the capacity in our body is really to know how to organize ourselves around our middle, how to organize our bottom, middle, and top, and our front and our middle and our center, our left and our right and our center. Pause in the center, take a nice deep breath in, organize yourself again. So really put yourself on that spit. So the ground of being is connected to below, the crown of your head up above, it's like the north star above you, and you're right at the center of yourself. Very good. Next time you breathe in, image that fire is rising up your back. Fire always rises from the pelvic floor to the crown of the head, and as you breathe out and exhale, Water grace descends down the front of you from the crown of the head down to the pelvic floor. Take a few steady rounds of breath. Fire rising, water descending. Your effort and your grace, your vigilance and your receptivity. Always playing these polarities and holding the middle. Make graceful effort. Good, one more time, take a deep breath in. Fill it all the way up, full as you can. <laughs> Hold your breath for a moment, drop your chin, lift your collarbones. And then exhale, big sigh. Very softly open your eyes and welcome yourself back. Do this practice as much as you need to, to really start to play with that fold in the hip and understanding the way that the anchoring in the perineum or that sense of anchoring ourselves on a spit on that great ridge pole really allows us to facilitate the spin, to get the vision, to have a nice east and a west, a left and a right, to really see around yourself. It's really important to have good side mirrors so you're not getting sideswiped in life. And again, our ability to twist comes out of putting ourselves on a rise. We can't spin and see well when we're hunched forward like this. The past, the memory, the shell of the back, all of this overtake takes the front and the vision gets very narrow and so when we try to spin we can't get around ourselves but when we're upright and organized and on that that pole we can really go all the way around ourselves so play explore embed this in your body and it'll really change the way that you're practicing and the function of your body as you're moving through various asana i will see you next time